It happens on days like this. It doesn't start with once upon a time, and it doesn't make sense to everyone. It happens while you're just strolling along the path. It happens on days like this. Days of wedding dresses, umbrellas, lampshades, and opera spectacles. Christmas white days, snow and taffeta white days, all whipped and peaked like white meringue. So don't look for breadcrumbs. The pigeons got there first. Before the gathering, the private beach was preset for an event. A long row of 13 wrought iron chairs painted hunter green were set tight together side by side. White sand lay in front of the chairs. It had been hand raked and sieved and then dragged smooth. The row of green chairs cast long, brown shadows that resembled daddy long legged spiders wearing tiaras. The lake waves were gentle, barely lapping the sand, a foamy, fizzy kiss. The, this phalanx of metal seats covered a dividing line between the smooth private resort sand and the dimpled, distorted granules of common public sand, cordoned off behind them. Back in the middle of town, an old geezer ran down the street perpendicular to the beach with a stainless steel pot on his head, fixed there by an elaborate knotting of rough brown twine. He shouted, Lambs to slaughter! Lambs to slaughter! His grizzled and stubbled face showed topographical wrinkles, terraformed by years of repeated concern. His saggy ears stretched long from under the pot helmet as he frantically craned his neck high and low in search of the invisible onslaught. Nothing happened. Nothing was slaughtered. No lambs were injured. He wore a bottom-of-the-barrel-looking-up expression of a person bobbing for apples. Meanwhile, outside of town on a rough country road, a cream-toned Jaguar Mark 7 saloon pulled to a gravel-tossing stop alongside a barbed wire fence framing a cow pasture. A chauffeur in tall, shiny boots got out and moved the crossboard gate aside, just enough to let a cheek-puffing man in tweed from the rear of the jag push through. His gray-haired head and jowls shook while facing the ground as he advanced, grunting and huffing like a rutting stag. The saving grace to his fine attire was that he wore rubber galoshes over his Italian shoes. The chauffeur kept the mortar idling on the saloon. A cosmopolitan blonde model in a stylish bright red tartan coat and solid red wool gloves struck cliché poses out in the middle of a pasture on a foggy morning amongst a herd of milk cows. The photographer adjusted a spotted cow with one bent horn in the middle ground focus, chewing its cud as the man in tweed came into the background frame and advanced directly in front of the photographer's lens. And what do you think all this pastoral sugar and paste is going to do, eh? Do you really think all this art photography will sell the client's line of toupees? How? You're not Skrabinski then, are you, Nigel? Not by a long shot. Now pack it up. We're going back to the studio. Picasso liked to paint, eat, and collect mistresses. What other life should be expected of artists? Nigel went about packing his equipment. Where does the time go? Most don't miss it until it's gone. Past, past. Snap the shots. Capture the photos. Develop the exposures. Those still lifes will only amplify the fact of how slow the viewer is moving, standing at still at light speed. The photographer does nothing but bend light to his way of seeing. Light is easy to create. Around the world are weed-grown cities of light polluting illumination from galaxies light years away. Nigel fitted his cases in the boot of the jag. Time-delayed exposures and infrared colors only reveal that suspected dots of reality are actually magnetic strings pulled to infinity by electric religion of each star. The man-made mechanical lenses capture what it sees, not what the photographer saw. Struggle, pose, react, breathe. Click, click, click. Light is nothing but sleight of hand, fool the eye gimmickry. It amuses the intellectual and pseudo-intellectual alike and scares the primitives into religion. 
Nigel stared out the car's window from the front passenger seat in silent meditation. A structure, a house, a house, a home, a home, a shrine in amber. Outdoor taekwondo impressionists take oils and canvas and nudes to the woods, pose them on a blanket with a black curly-haired Afghan hound gnawing on a bone, and call it art. The artwork, nothing more than a prop for the easel. Headshots, busts, torsos, and reclining nudes, human gestalt anatomy at f-stop intervals. The field of depth is what's in question. The Jaguar saloon pulled into the alley behind the studio. The advertising director exited the Jaguar without further comment. Nigel paused before getting out. Here, behind the commercial studio, those city boys, the ones with the jackets, bowlers, and pipe bats, they'll shed some critical light on art. They'll wait in the trash-strewn alleyways, atop pine crates and oak barrels, and hide behind building cornerstones. They'll wait with dark, mustached, unwashed faces, waiting to beat you into the perspective of their world, their hell-crop lives. But you had to get that last shot, capture that wanting flavor of ignorance and violence and depravity for posterity, didn't you, Nigel?